So, um, when we look at it that way, um, what what we will try and do um, is try and change a thought or an emotion. So, if we change the way that you think about something, um, that in turn can increase your emotion. So, it might uh, increase your self esteem or the, your confidence in yourself, and then that will ultimately relate in you behaving differently or more desirably. Does that sort of make sense? Yeah. Yeah, okay, good. Um, so now that we've sort of, that's just a rough, a very rough idea of, a very broad idea of what we do here. Um, just in your own time, how about you um, tell me why you've come to see me today? Okay. <coughs> And there's no pressure, you just take your time. Well, I was married mm -hmm. five years ago, mm -hmm. but then she left me. Okay. Uh, and since then, I've had a, a real problem talking to women. Okay. I'd like to pursue a relationship again, but I have no self-esteem in myself, I guess. I'd like to work on that. And there's this waitress at a local coffee shop, mm -hmm. which I would like to ask it. Yeah. Uh, yeah. It's and just getting the, up the... The courage. Yeah. No, that's, that's completely understandable. Um, look, it was five years ago that your marriage ended. Yeah. And look, if you don't feel comfortable telling me, you don't have to, but may I ask uh, why it ended? Get into it. No, no, it's too, that's fine. Um, look, coming from something like that where um, you're in a relationship with a significant person in your life and it ends, um, regardless of the nature of it, it's clear to me from your body language and the way that you um, talk about how you've been the last five years, um, it's clear that. Um, it did hurt you, but it has um, affected your self-esteem. Um, that you've perhaps lost your faith in the concept of uh, having relationships, even though you say that you would like to pursue a relationship. That's right. Mm -hmm. um, I'm sort of sensing that there's this fear that you're going to be hurt again. Yeah. You say, okay, yeah. And in turn, that is making you nervous. Um, yeah and making it very difficult for you to talk to women about that. Because um, it's clear that although you are nervous and that you are um, having difficulty talking about relationships, you are still having a conversation with me, so it's more of a social level. So when, it, when it's more of a social level or if you're talking with a work colleague that's a female, that, that's not a, an issue. Mm. Okay, so it's just when there's that element of you would like it to be perhaps in some stage intimate and yeah. that's when the fear, okay. Yeah. And that's completely understandable. Um, I could talk from my own uh, experiences and uh, say that it's completely normal um, to lose faith and... Um, Sometimes it takes people a long time to come back from it. Some people bounce back. It's, it's just, you know, every individual is different. I know that it took me quite some time to um, have enough in confidence in myself to actually get myself back out there. So there's absolutely no judgment here. Um, but I think what we can do is perhaps um, try and come up with some ways to just change the way that you feel and the way that you think about yourself and um, perhaps even just try and change your nervousness and, and your fear and perhaps just give you a forum where you can practice talking to a woman on an intimate level um, and just almost rehearse it in a way, get your courage back up mm -hmm. uh, and then it may feel a little bit easier. I could say that um, actually coming here and seeking help is the first step and 
probably the hardest. Um, so from here, um, if I'm good at my job, it should be smooth sailing. It should be a lot easier than it was to actually come here today and tell me why you're here. So you've already done the hardest bit. Now it's just a matter of working at your own pace and working at where you feel comfortable and coming up with some strategies to even just start a conversation with this lady. You said it's a lady from... No, cafe. Oh, from... Yep, so do you frequent this cafe often? Yes. Yep. Yeah. Um, have you sort of spoken to her much or...? A little bit. Yeah, she tried. yeah well, that's good. So, um, do you do you sense that perhaps uh, there might be an attraction there coming from her behalf, or I think so. You think so? Yes. Okay, so that's that's two very good things. You've already had a little bit of conversation with her, and can yeah. I ask just these little conversations? How 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 do you feel when 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 they happen? Uh, nervous or I get very nervous. Okay, right, um, and that's because you would like to ask her out, and that's where the nervousness is coming from. Right, if it was a waitress that you didn't have any interest in asking out, chances are your conversation would be different. Yeah. Okay. Well, I think what we can try and do, um, one of the methods from the cognitive behavioural therapy that I was telling you about earlier, um, one of them is actually role-playing. So it's just... In, in simplest form, practicing. So in your case, it would be practicing a conversation with the waitress. Now, um, I think to take a little bit of the pressure off, um, I think it's important to keep in mind that, how long have you sort of been going to this cafe when she's been working there? A few weeks. A few weeks, yeah. so it's not too long. No. no. So I think that what we can do, you've said that you've started talking to her, there's a little bit of chit chat. Yeah. Um, perhaps rather than jumping all the way to, let's figure out a way to ask her out, um, perhaps what we might just do to start off with is perhaps eliminate that question, that daunting question that makes you feel nervous. Still have in the back of your mind that you are interested in her, mm -hmm. but perhaps your fear might be stemming also from getting the courage up and getting it and steering the conversation to a place where you can ask it, which in itself can make anyone nervous. I really don't think there are many people out there that um, aren't nervous asking someone out because anyone is afraid of that element of being rejected or turned down. So I think to start off with, we could just practice some ways to perhaps develop the conversation a little bit more and just to start getting to know her a little bit. So, for example, if you're happy to give this a go, mm -hmm. what we can do is I can be the waitress, okay? Mm -hmm. So it's just a normal day. We'll say for this example, just to start things off, that um, you've placed your order, yeah. She's, I'm making it, and you're standing there waiting. There's, the shop's empty. When you walked in, I was actually looking quite bored. Um, no one behind you, so there's no pressure, you don't have to rush or anything. Um, how about, because she's looking bored, how about we just try to just begin a conversation, ask her how her day is, um, you know, it's pretty, pretty, uh, pretty quiet in here today, um, etc, etc, how does that sound? Yeah. Okay, yeah. alright, so just in your own time, I'm making the coffee. Mm -hmm. No pressure, it's just simply if it was a work colleague asking her how her day is. Okay. Okay. Or asking me how my day is as a counsellor, there's no pressure. Right? So, in your own time. Uh, how's your day been? It's pretty quiet in here. Oh, it's been so boring. Considering coming off the weekend when we were absolutely flat out and the days just flew by, today mm. is just dragging on. I'm so glad I've got someone here to talk to. <laughs> That's good. Yeah, how's your day been? Oh, it's pretty good. Yeah. Yeah. Coffee good. always makes it better. It does. Yes. Well done. <laughs> <laughs> so what have you got planned for the rest of your day? Uh, not a lot, really. No. So you can perhaps say, how about yourself? Um, do you reckon it might pick up over lunch? Something like that. So keep going. 
Um, how about yourself? Um, well, once we finish work, the boss mentioned it because it's so quiet, it might show up early today. So once that's done, I guess I'll just, I don't know, I'll have to have a think. And usually we work pretty late, so I'm yeah. going to have an afternoon to myself by the sounds mm. of it. Sounds good. Yeah. So from here, um, if you could, perhaps if it's a nice day outside, mm. you could perhaps talk about it. Um, the nice weather and what you could do, or if it's really gross outside, you can sort of say, oh, it's not really a very nice day to be out and about, you know, just make just general conversation. Mm. Okay, keep going. Um, nice day outside, you get out? Yeah, I think so. I was actually thinking, I like, usually walk to work, um, but at night times I usually take the bus home because I just can't be bothered, I'm too tired, but I'm thinking I might go for a walk. Um, but... We'll see how we go. It depends what time we'll finish. Mm -hmm. Sounds lovely. Yeah. So do you live nearby or? Oh, yeah. Pretty local. Yeah. Oh, good. Um, all right. So you've got a couple of things from there. So yeah. once you take away the element of asking her out, um, it's just a normal person, you'll still be a little bit nervous. Mm -hmm. um, but we can actually continue to do these things. And it won't be that you'll walk in being rehearsed because she will probably answer differently to how I will. And chances mm -hmm. are it probably won't be an empty shop yeah. on a really nice sunny day. So just having in the back of your mind, if it's a really busy day and she looks flat out, mm -hmm. you know, you might, you might try, what, 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 what are some, if it's really busy and she looks absolutely flat out, she looks hot, she looks flustered, you know, what is something for you? You got any ideas of what you might say to her while she's making your coffee there? Yeah. You're pretty busy in here. Yeah. Yeah. Stuff. yeah. Yeah. Good. That's it. So again, it's once that fear of you know not having to ask her out while she's making your coffee and plucking up the courage to do that. Take mm. that away. Just look at what her life is there. She's busy. It's flat out. She looks exhausted. Just go from there. Um, if she is interested in you, which you think that she is, yeah, yeah she will talk back. She will make conversation just yeah. as much as you do. And I guarantee you that with the continuing sessions that we have um, and the continued time that you go and see her, look, the first time all you might get is, hi, how are you? Um, Geez, it looks really busy today. Mm -hmm. I feel really sorry for you, you know. Um, I hope it quiets down for you later and your boss will let you have a break or whatever. And you'll walk away and you'll think, all right. Yeah. And then the next time you go in there, you just keep developing conversation. It will become so comfortable with her and so easy that there will be less fear, there will be less nervousness. You will still have that apprehension, you know. Anyone has apprehension mm -hmm. when they're putting themselves out there. But with a bit of a foundation to work from and there's that comfortability between the two of you, it will be a lot easier. How does that sound? That sounds good. So what we'll try good. Yeah? Good. Yeah. So what we'll try and aim to do every time you come in, mm -hmm. we'll keep doing a couple of different role plays. Yep. Um a couple of different scenarios. Um, and what I also think we should do, um, because you frequent this cafe quite often, don't you? Mm -hmm. Okay, so perhaps in your own time, um, have a think about, um, have a think about some conversation starters with her. Okay. Um, every time you go in there, pay a little bit of attention to her, um, yep. and from the information that you do get from her, and also monitor your feelings. So how nervous you feel the first time you start trying to talk to her. Mm -hmm. And perhaps what you could try and do, just as a little bit of homework, I know we're all, you know, sick of school and we all never want to go back. I know, yeah. uh, oh no, I'm actually still studying at the moment and I wish I wasn't. Mm -hmm. um, but if you could just perhaps record and just write a bit of a diary about um, how you're progressing. This is also another method from um, our therapy here. Um, and it's just a matter of tracking. Um, your thoughts, your emotions, and your behaviours. So that when you come in here, we can actually look back and think, okay, so it's this emotion yeah. that makes you behave in this way, or it's this thought. 
and it will better enable us to really pinpoint um, where we need to work from and where we can go. So, how does that sound? Yeah, sounds good. Great. All right. Great. Yeah. Um, well, plain, simple, easy conversation with her. She's mm -hmm. just a colleague. She's just a friend. She's just a waitress in a cafe. Yeah. That's all she is. No fear, no daunting, no, no hanging above the head. Oh, geez, I want to ask her out. Don't think about that. Just think of it more as I just want to get to know her a little bit more. Simple. Mm -hmm. And while you're doing that, keep a diary about how you feel you're going, how you feel you want to improve. And then every time we have another session, we can talk about that, talk about how you progress, and keep practicing some conversation with her. Yeah. Sound good? Yeah. And you know yeah. what? Perhaps one day in the future, you could actually say to her, when she knows you, you can say, I was so nervous about asking somebody out that I had to practice this stuff. So you're lucky that I decided to use it on you. Mm -hmm. You know, it's yeah. all good things. Mm -hmm. Sounds good? Yeah. All right. Well, I think you are, um, you're in for next week, same time next week. Yeah. Sounds good? Yeah. And uh, yeah, if you can just have a go, no pressure, only when you have time, just write down a few bits and pieces and uh, bring that in next week and we'll go from there. Okay. Okay, cool. It was lovely meeting you, Matt. You too. And I'll see you in a week. Okay. Good luck. Thank you. Bye. See ya.